Hello everyone. Good evening to all. I appreciate your time here. So we are going to talk about time. So why not appreciate the time that you are not spending, but reflecting here, trying to capture information and clarifications as stated by, by Emmanuel here in this quote. Uh, Emmanuel wrote this book along with uh, Francisco Candido, Candido Xavier. The, the book is Time Is Now, and it's very related to how we are going to optimize our time, how we are going to use our time. Our time is one of the most valuable things we've got, and it's in our control all the time, all the time. So Emmanuel mentioned here, time, time flies, and we all aspire to find in the smallest amount of time information or clarification to support us conquering the required spiritual values. Everybody, not, not only the, the ones that are here, the ones online, but everybody is looking to conquer spiritual values. It's internal to us because God is in our mind. You know, God is inherent here. And so we all, uh, if it's uh, intentional or unintentional, we are looking for, for these spiritual values. Okay? So let's talk about time in a subjective way, in an objective way. I'm going to show you how we can, we can optimize our time and using a small effort, how we can improve the way that we are going to optimize our time. Okay? So, nothing better to bring the instructions from the spirits. Right? The spirits, they brought the information, the true property. It's inside the the Gospel According to Spiritism by Allan Kardec. It's in the chapter uh, 16, item 9. So the true property. So from your opinion here, what is the true property that we've got in our life? The true property. It's our home. It's our car. It's our money. So the Spirit is saying, no, it's not this. Actually, the true property is what we can bring with us after we finish this incarnation. So what we can bring with us is basically what the soul will use forever. It's basically the intelligence, so study, capture new stuff, understanding why we are here, knowledge, and moral qualities. So this is our true property. That's what we are looking for, right? We are going to spend our money trying to capture this true property for our eternal life. So, and also, it's up to him, the man, to be richer on departure than he was on arriving in this world. So, it's up to, to us to improve or to stay. We will never go back. So, we stay or we improve. It's up to us. It's in our control all the time. So we are not delegating to anyone to improve our moral qualities, our intelligence. We cannot study to others and give, uh, make the exam uh, on behalf of others. We need to do the exams on ourselves. We study and then we do the exam. It's the same here. So we need to understand that our future position will depend sol solely on what qualities have been gained in the present life. So it's all the time in our control, and most of the time, we forget about it. So we forget. So what, I, what I'm going to do, we are on a hurry. We are running out of time. I'm stressed because of time. I don't have time for this. Why? It's in our control. So let's talk a bit about that thing today. Because this study here, it's, it's not only for us to finish the 30 minutes here, 40 minutes here go back home. No, let's reflect. Let's think about it. The idea here is to bring to us a reflection to improve the way that we are handling our time. Okay? So feel free to raise your hand and if you got any questions, feel free to raise your hand here, okay? So that's what I said here. In, in, uh, if we can put these uh, this words into a, into a graphic. So the of time we receive it from God is our time. 
He gave it to us free, but you cannot save it. You cannot stock the time and use it later. You have the time and you need to spend that time. The way we are going to spend it, we need to reflect and see, am I spending that my time well? Am I spending my time so bad? So it's up to us to, to understand how we are spending our time. So let's see. The best way that we can make a, a comparison if we are spending our time so good or not, and the way that we are going to see in the future if we spend our time in a good way or in a bad way. So let's hear from the spirits. Kardec, in this book here, Heaven and Hell, he brought a lot of uh, uh, knowledge from spirits from the other side. What happened to you in the incarnation life and after the incarnation? So let's hear from the spirits what they mention about time. Because if you, if you, if you had a chance to read that book, you're going to perceive that most of the spirits are talking about the way that they spend their time. Did I spend well? Oh, I missed my time. I'm missing that. I'm missing so. So let's hear from them. A happy spirit. Maurice Gontrain. Let's see what he mentioned here. The time I spent there in the incarnation was not without benefit. And today, I congratulate myself for not having lost it. So he's happy. I spend my time in useful things for my spirit. Of course, we need to have money to buy food. We need to have money to commute. But think about it on spending your time for your, uh, for your improvements in the soul your moral improvements. Let's hear for the average spirits. Joseph Bray, I atone for my disbelief. However, great is the goodness of God who responds to circumstances. I suffer, but not as you could imagine. It is the regret, look at that, of not having better used the time there on earth. So we're all going to die, right? We are all going to be in the, in, the, in the other plan. Is it good for us to regret the time that we spend in a, in, a, in, not, in a useful condition? Of course not. That's what he's regretting here. And he's an average spirit. Okay? And let's see a suffering one. Auguste Michel. I am free. Anyway, but I have not yet expiated. I need to repair the time I lost if I do not want to extend the suffering. You see? Here he complained of not having better use of the time. Here he's thinking about repair the time I lost. So both of them lost the time, the average and the suffering ones. But this one right here is congratulating himself. I'm happy. I spend my time in a useful way for my spiritual life okay so it's the you've got a lot of uh, other spirits and uh, heaven and hell and they are going to mention something pretty similar about time the way they spend and the way it, if they are feeling happy or not any questions here once again from this book what Emmanuel Emmanuel is a uh, is the mentor of Francisco Cândido Xavier. He is already incarnated. He's back to this, uh, this material life in 2000. But he left this message here in this book. Yesterday, oops. Yesterday, you were what you were. Gone. I cannot control that. Tomorrow, you will be what you make of yourself now. You cannot predict. It's, in, it's, in, it's not in your control, 100% in your control. Today, however, you are what you are. Therefore, do not stop. Don't stop. Don't think about the past. Take the opportunity now to accomplish the good you owe and the best you can do. So when you put your, your head in the pillow, 
Think about what he did today. St. Augustine mentioned that thing in, in the question 919, right? So put your, put your head in the pillow and think about what I did today. What I did today for my spirit. What I did today for others. And see if you're spending the time so well. So have you seen this film here with the Groundhog Day? Have anyone seen this film here? It's an old one from the 90s. It's an old one. But it's a film that the time that I saw this film, I didn't give so much importance. It's another film and something. But after I saw it again, after I start to study the, the spirit doctrine, and uh, I understand this, what is behind this film. This film, this guy right here, Bill Murray, he was waking up the same day, every day. Imagine if you are waking up, today is uh, September 3rd. Imagine if tomorrow you're going to wake up September 3rd, and the next day as well, September 3rd, the same day, meeting the same people. And then he perceived that even the smallest stuff, he can improve. So you say, oh, I talked to this. I, the first time he didn't talk to anyone. The second time he gave good morning. And the guy replied him back with a smile. And then he perceived that I can improve. So imagine if you can do that thing. Imagine... Tomorrow, if you can wake up, yesterday. So what I did wrong, can I fix it? Can I improve it? So if you see this film right here, you're going to understand much better the importance of time and how you should not spend your time with silly stuff that will not bring anything to your soul. Got it? Make sense? Here, about time. We've got three options only, right? The present, the past, and the future. If we live in the present, what we should do to improve our spiritual values? We should do our own effort in terms of moral to improve. So what we can do to improve, what I should do, am I doing right? If someone did that thing to me, I'm going to be happy or I'm going to be sad. So think about what are you doing to others if someone will, will express a gratitude to you. So it seems that you are good. So you should believe your faith. You should believe that you are doing the right thing. You should believe that God put you in the right place in the right time for your improvement. He's not punishing you. He's putting you in the right family in the right time with the right people around, the right friends, exactly for you to improve. Believe on that thing all the time. Don't punish yourself. Thankful all the time. So I appreciate even the bad situation will give to us a learning. So a bad situation will give to us what I should depict from this situation to improve myself. Right? So be thankful. Even the worst scenario, you can, uh, you can squeeze a good thing for you. So if I give you a lemon, what you're going to do? A lemonade, right? And be positive. So we are all facing here. I can see the, the uncomfortable situation for all of us using the masks and not meeting with the friends all the time, not going to the parks as we used to go, not going to travel as we used to go. So, But be positive. Something is happening now for better in the future. Think about that thing all the time. Because if we live in the past all the time, of course, depression is not a consequence of, of thinking about the past. But depression is coming from chemical in the body, a lot of other stuff. But if you live in the past, you open a door. You open a door for depression to come. So. The past is the past. Try to learn from the past, not to live in the past. And the future. Anxiety, right? If you think so much about the future, you don't have a control in the future. The future could be something good, could be something that you don't know. But if you live so much in the future, you're going to open the door for the anxiety. And the anxiety <laughs> is another door for the depression. So what is your option here? You've got three options. If you can choose just one option to leave, what's going to be the best one? The present. The time is now. Right? Leave your present. 
to make plans for the future, but don't live in the future. And Joana de Angelis, uh, the mentor of uh, Divaldo Franco, in this book, that author read one chapter today, on the chapter 47, Joana brought that idea here. Your anxiety or fear will not change the pace of hours. It doesn't matter. The hour is the hour, right? And this and the earth, of course, if you are traveling to another planet, maybe the time is going to be different, for sure. But in, at the, in the earth, the pace of hours will not change because of your anxiety. Wait for the facts that will happen without anticipating your suffering. You're suffering by anticipation. Why? Spend your time on suffering. You're killing yourself. Why? Makes no sense, right? So anxiety is something that if you live so much in the future, once again, if you start to think so much in the future, bring it back to the present. What you can do today to make a better future. That's the right option, right? Living the present, uh, we talk about subjectivity. I'm an engineer, and I like to bring all the subjective topics to a, some kind of objective way, right? Let's talk about how you're going to live uh, the present, but in a mathematic way. So if we, if we do nothing every day, that's one extreme to improve myself. So let's use one, right? One is a, a neutral value when you multiply in mathematics. So if you don't do nothing, you stay in one in a year. So if you get that thing three, 365 times, what is going to be at the end of the year? The same, one, right? I didn't do anything, I stay. So if I improve just 1%, Imagine every day I'm going to spend 1% to improve myself, to improve my spiritual values. 1% only. How many minutes is 1% of a day? How many minutes? Can you make a calculation? It's a little bit less than 15 minutes. So let's say if you spend just 15 minutes to improve yourself every day. Read a book. Forgive someone. Call someone. Give good words to another one. Study. So just 1%. Look at that number here. 1.01. 365. It's going to be 37 times better. 37 times better for doing a minimal effort of 1% only. And this is confirmed by Kardec in the Spirit's book. Question 909. Are an individual own efforts enough to vanquish his or her bad tendencies? The answer is, it's not it depends, it's yes. Yes, objective. A very small effort is of, it's often all that is needed. Just a small, I presented to you here, right? It's just 1%. If you can do 2%, imagine the number. If it's 2%, it's going to be much higher. It's the will that is missing, the will. So do I, do I want to do that thing? Do I want to improve? It depends only on me. It depends only on us, right? It's quite astonishing that few of you, of us, are doing any serious effort. So most of the people we perceive are not doing any effort to improve not to improve in terms of money, to improve in terms of spiritual life. And we prove here that just 15 minutes a day. If you cannot spend 15 minutes a day for you, so I don't know how you're going to prioritize your time for other stuff. Right? Reflect on that thing. Any questions here? No? Okay, it's obvious, right? It's so obvious. And let's talk about optimizing the time. So, Marcio, you mentioned about time, 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 but I've got difficulties to optimize my time. 
to know how can I move forward with my time. First question we need to do is, do we have lack of time or lack of priorities? Can you answer? The second one, right? We don't have lack of time. God gave you a lot of time. But you don't have the priority. So it's easy for you to say, I don't have time. It's easier than to prioritize, see what is the, the number one option, the second one, the third one. It's easy for you to say, I don't have time to do that. It's easy. It's because we are all lazy, right? That's what Kardec mentioned in the Spirit's book. It seems that we are lazy. We cannot do an effort to prioritize your time. It's your time. It's a, uh, imagine that if the, if the time is a money, it's your money. You're going to spend this money. So it's, uh, it's a lot of money to spend. The time is a lot of money. So easy to answer that. Lack of priority. But how can we, can we prioritize? We need to have a criterion. And the criteria is basically to classify the activities within a period of time. Simple, right? Number one, number two, number three, number four. This one I'm going to do it tomorrow because it's not my priority now. Make sense? And what is going to be the criteria here? The criteria should be based on importance, objective, urgency. So let's say I, I'm sick. I need to go to the physician, right? I'm going to prioritize to go to the physician. So it's going to be number one. Then I go to the physician, receive the medicine, and then back home, and then continue my priority. That's what we do all, all the time. The impact. What I'm going to do right now will, will impact someone, will impact myself. So just reflect. It's simple. If I don't do to this, uh, if I don't prioritize uh, to call someone, what's going to happen to this person? What's the impact? And if you've got control or not. So basically, if you don't know how to prioritize, I like to use pictures. Look at this guy right here. Most of you in a circus have seen this guy, right? Trying to to keep the, the plates rolling in a stick. So what this guy is doing? This guy is giving importance to the ones that he has control, right? And then he's going to focus exactly on this point here. It's important, and I've got control. Then I'm going to focus. That's what he does. When this one starts to, to change, he goes extra and change, prioritizing. Is it difficult? Yes. For this case, it's difficult. But on a daily basis, if you practice that, is it important? Do I have control on this? So focus on that. Why are you prioritizing something important that you don't have control? Why are you prioritizing something that you've got control, but it's not important? So it should be both, focus and importance and control. Keep that thing in mind. Remember that picture here. And then keep your focus on prioritizing what you need to do first, right? What needs to wait, what needs to be done maybe next year because it's not important. It's in my control, but it's not important, so let me push back. Methodologies for this uh, time of optimization. It's good to know because people spend time trying to develop and put in a book and put in a paper and present in a conference some kind of methodology on how we are going to improve our self-knowledge, our engagement. And let's use those methodologies to, let's leverage those methodologies to optimize our time. Does anyone here know uh, knows any any methodology for for self knowledge for engagement? So let me show you two methodologies here. Those methodologies are based on self knowledge. 
because to prioritize your time, you need to, to understand yourself. You need to do a self-knowledge. What is important for me is a self-knowledge. You're going to give importance to something based on your self-knowledge. So two technologies here. One is the, the Parda. The other one is the OODA loop. They are pretty similar. Pretty similar. I'm going to show you later. Pretty similar to each other. Parda means perception, acceptance, reflection, decision, and action. Five steps. OODA is observe, orient, decide, and act. The OODA was developed by, by a, a colonel from the U.S. Air Force in the 50s. He was a, a pilot, uh, a military pilot. So, and he would like to develop a methodology for engagement. Imagine a pilot in a jet or a supersonic uh, engaging with enemies. He doesn't have so much time to prioritize the, what I should do first. So when he reached the, the operations, he needs to identify what I should do first. So he developed that, uh, this methodology, the OODA. So first of all, observe what I've got here. Oriented, what I can do. Decide and act. And that's the way the pilots uh, decide when they engage it in, a, in a air combat. Parda is pretty similar. It's a perception, uh, acceptance, reflection, decision, and act. But Parda was developed later, I think in the 90s, uh, for self-knowledge. It's a methodology for self-knowledge. So if we overlap both, we're going to see that they are almost the same. And we can use that to optimize our time. So if you do that thing every day, let me go to the steps here. Every day, first of all, let me, let me concentrate in the OODA because OODA is just four steps. And if you see here, the step two and the step three could be merged into the step two of the OODA, Orient. Acceptance and reflection could be merged here. So let's see. First of all, perception, observe. What is this? Internally, self-knowledge. Do I know myself? Do I know my capacity? Do I know what is important for me? Do I know what I can do? What, what is under my control? That's the question we should ask ourselves. There's no other way to someone to ask you that question or to answer that question on your behalf. And externally, where, where I am inserted. So what is my environment, my job, my family? So I'm inserted. Of course, you need to decide based on that thing. You cannot postpone something that you do at your job today because you should do that thing in your job today. Then you need to figure out externally and internally what is important for you. And uh, externally, the context of the, the activities that you are prioritizing. Oops. Oh. Sorry about that. Okay, sorry about that. Orient. What is orient? Identify the direction. Right? So as the pilot. Imagine the pilot. What I should do? I should go this way, this way, this way. So what I can do. Oh, no. So orient means what I can do and what is possible to do. You cannot, you cannot ask yourself, I'm, gonna, I'm going to the moon yesterday. It's not possible, right? I can do, yeah, maybe, if I can fly, but it's not possible. So you're not going to the moon tomorrow. So Orient is, if we could summarize this exactly this, what I can do and what is possible to do. 
Decision. Decide. I'm going to decide. Okay. Those are the options. I'm going to decide. Decide means what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. And then you prioritize based on your criteria and make your plan. Is it hard? No. It's just a practice. It's like, it's like I mentioned about St. Augustine. St. Augustine taught us that every day at night before going to sleep, think about what, what you did the day and what you can improve. What he's doing basically is a self-knowledge. What I did, what I can improve to be useful tomorrow. So he's deciding, he's planning. He's planning what he's going to do. He's prioritizing what he's going to do, basically. So decision. So, and finally, the least, the last but not the least, is the action makes no sense for you to plan and to not engage, to not act. So if you plan, do it. Engage. Make what you planned. And then you're going to give a, a practice if my prioritization is, uh, is okay. You can adjust the way, the criterion that you are prioritizing your activities. Base it on your actions. So let's say I, I was planning to paint my wall in a day. So the next day I wake up, start to paint, but I didn't finish that day. I'm going to just, the next time I want to paint this wall, I'm going to plan it for two days. So, right? Simple. Try to make this uh, execution as a learning for future plannings. Any questions here? No? I try to simplify as much as possible, but this is to give an idea. If you want to study, there's a lot of books about the OODA. So if you go to the internet, if you go to a book, there's a lot of books describing the ways that you're going to prioritize, the ways that you identify what you can do, the ways that you identify what is possible to do. So is, here is just an idea, is just to give you a, a seed to study. Because our doctrine, uh, I our doctrine is self-study and self-knowledge all the time. So you need to go. You need to, to be curious. You need to, oh, I learned that thing today, so let me go further. Go further, further. That's what the doctrine mentions most of the time. Okay? Once again, this time of optimization, as I said, it's a continuous process. It's not something that I'm planning today and tomorrow... Forget about it. I don't need to plan anymore. No, you need to plan all the time. You're planning all the time. You're adjusting your planning, by the way. So if you see here, you start with the observe. What I go externally, internally. My objectives, my importance. So what I should do, observe. Then you orient. But if you orient and you make, oh, this orientation that I'm giving, it's not right. Go back to observe. What you did wrong in the observation. And then you can go back and make the right decision on the way that you're going to react. Okay? Decide. Once again, if you decide, but the way that you decide, mm, I can't do that thing. Go back to observe. And see if you prioritize it well. And see if you, if you actually identify it yourself knowledge. Identify what is the, the point that blocked you, that hampered you to decide. The same way when you act. So it's a continuous process. So it's just a practice. Practice makes perfection. So if we practice on a regular days, like Santo Agustin mentioned every day before going to, to sleep, think about what, of what you did. The same thing here. When you prioritize, I've got five, five activities to do today. So think about what is the most important for you. What is the number one? Number two, number three, number four. How much time are you going to spend doing that? Five minutes, maybe? Maybe in the beginning you're going to spend a lot of time, but if you get practice, you're going to prepare yourself. Right? Prepare yourself all the time. Say a prayer. If you don't know where to go, say a prayer. 
ask to your mentors what I should prioritize. Give me a clarification, please. For sure, they are going to help you. If you ask with, uh, with a faith, they are going to help you. They are going to tell you. I would suggest you. They will not interfere in your free will. But they are going to suggest you, I think this way is a little bit better. So ask. Say a prayer. Communicate with your mentor. It's free. By the way, like the time, we receive a huge amount of time for free. Spend it. Don't save it. Spend it. Spend it in the right way. Any questions here on this methodology? You want me to go back? Any questions in the steps? Once again, Emmanuel. This is fantastic. This quote here from Emmanuel is, is great. And Emmanuel, Emmanuel mentioned to us, regarding all the wealth God lends to us, one exists that we cannot store. It's the time. I mentioned during the, this lecture that it's the time, it's the treasure of days. Each one of us is obliged to spend his own hours exchanging them for something, right? Time is your money. If we can say that, you're going to change your time to receive something. You're going to do your effort to improve your soul, to improve your spiritual values. You're going to change your time. At the end of each incarnation, the hour administrators, your mentors, your mentors will ask you, what did you do with the time God entrusted to you? Then you finally understand that time is life. Pretty simple. I cannot say, Emmanuel is, is great when he summarizes that knowledge into a single quote, time is life. Every time I hear in my life, time is money, which is wrong, right? It's wrong. Time is life. It's not money. Money is what you're making with your time for a good purpose or for a bad purpose. It's up to you. Okay? Make sense? I appreciate your time today for staying here for 40 minutes listening to me and hope that this reflection here will help you all on prioritizing your time, understanding this final message here. So if someone mentioned to you, I don't have time, what are you going to say? No, you don't have prioritization. You've got time. Time you've got. No questions about that. You don't have the priority to do so. And if someone talked to you and mentioned that time is money, what are you going to say to him? Time is life. It's not money. Money is what you're exchanging your time. So it's not life. Time is life. Thank you all. Thank you.